All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Jordan Larson, and I will be your host for this NASA Technology Transfer Program webinar on the ruggedized infrared camera. Our presenter today will be Jonathan Pryor and Jarrett Bohm. Jonathan Pryor graduated from Tennessee Tech University in 2011 with an undergraduate degree in electrical engineering, and he started working at NASA as a co-op in 2009. And he began working as a full-time um, at graduation just after that. Mr. Pryor has worked on the imaging team for his entire career at NASA and contributed to various projects, including launch vehicle imagery, balloon telescope imagery, and sounding rocket avionics. In 2017, he graduated from the University of Alabama in Huntsville with a master's degree in computer engineering, which he obtained while continuing to work at NASA. Jarrett Bone graduated from Utah State University in 2014 with a BS in mechanical engineering. He worked for Boeing from 2014 to 2017 on a wide range of design simulations and mechanical design projects, including docking adapters, aircraft fuel tanks, commercial crew capsule, and SLS. He started working for NASA in 2017 as an electronics packaging engineer. He worked on many projects, including the visible light, IR cameras, landers, video encoders, and even developed a 3D printed electronics enclosures and other experimental manufacturing techniques. Following the presentation, I will give a brief description on how NASA licenses technologies to outside organizations. But before we get started, I would like to point out that everyone's microphones will be muted throughout the presentations. So if you have any questions, please chat, type them into the chat box, which is located in the lower right corner of your screen and we will answer them during the Q&A session at the end. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to you too, Jarrett and Jonathan. All right, thank you, Jordan, for that introduction. Let me pull up my mic. Okay. All right, I can see it. Great, okay. So, Today, Jonathan and I are going to give uh, a presentation that's kind of an overview of this ruggedized miniature IR camera, um, why it was developed and its, its use today. So just to get started, uh, the use for this camera is contextual imagery for a NASA mission called Lofted. That stands for Low Earth Orbit Flight Test of an Inflatable Deflector. So basically, I hope most of you are familiar with the concept of a, a reentry heat shield. Usually, you know, they're big, uh, bulky, rigid items that are not very flexible. Well, they wanted to create an inflatable heat shield uh, for use on future missions and as part of the testing and qualification of this, they wanted to have a whole bunch of infrared cameras looking at the inside of the shield to, to see how effective it was, to look for any, you know, uh, breakdown or any uh, tear through of, of the heat shield. And so in addition to these IR cameras, we actually have visual cameras as well. And they're located in these camera pods, as you see here. Uh, circled in yellow. In that camera pod is a pair of IR cameras and a visual camera. And uh, I guess uh, we're here to talk about the IR camera today. So there's a video here. Um, there's a link to this video that we can look at later. We were trying to get the video up and running, but uh, we were having some technical issues with that earlier. So what was the problem statement for this, uh, this camera? You know, as you know, in engineering, oftentimes you'll set down with a set of requirements and, and go from there. So uh, the camera was chosen by the, the avionics group and they handed it to us and said, hey, we need you to, to get this thing uh, ruggedized and able to work in our environments. You know, they, they picked this camera because of its cost, its size, and uh, we we started from there. So typically, as we 
design these kind of cameras. You know, we're, we're interested in a small size for this mass. Um, the cameras need to be passively cooled, which means everything is, all the heat is wicked away through conduction rather than through a fan, like a convection or something like that. Um, something else that was required was recognized, a recognized connector with wire harnessing. We needed materials that could handle the high temperature and connector that could handle the high vibration. Also, we had a concern with off-gassing, and so that typically limits the amount of, of uh, volatiles we can have in our wiring. And so uh, in addition to those restrictions and considerations, we had to, of course, uh, uh, ruggedize the camera for vibration and shock. And then, of course, uh, a good EMI design where we're not susceptible to um, radio frequency or uh, or uh, st static discharges. So, you know, we, we needed uh, proper isolation electrically and proper uh, uh, a good enclosure to protect the camera. Jonathan, you want to talk about the selection of the Boson 640? Sure. Yeah, I can talk a little bit about it. Um... We actually have some experts in uh, thermal imagery that worked on selecting the camera. Um, so there's not a whole lot that I can go into, you know, discussing the reasoning behind the selection of the camera. However, it did meet the imagery requirements needed uh, for the thermal imagery. Um, and because of its small size and compact nature, uh, it made it a lot easier to adapt to a structure and to ruggedize. Uh, what's also nice about this camera is that it comes with that back plane, as you can see in the center photo, um, with that connector where it gives you a lot of uh, expandability. And that's what allowed us to add on a ruggedized connector and to um, and get away from having to use like a, a stock USB-C style connector, which is what it comes with. So that USB-C connector um, was not ideal for a flight scenario. It needed to be reworked. And because this is so expandable, it let us add on a mill style connector. That's all direct on that slide. Yeah, so if we go to this slide, we can see uh, what, what Jonathan was talking about. You can see here in the top right, there's this picture of the stock camera as it comes from the manufacturer and the board that goes to a, you know, a standard USB-C connector that, you know, we're all familiar with from our iPhones or, sorry, not iPhones, <laughs> Android phones or, or other devices. Um, and so this camera uses a USB-C connector, but I think it's still USB 2.0 protocol. Is that correct, Jonathan? Yes. Okay. Or at least so, use 2.0 for sure. Okay, great. So yeah, so part of our repackaging work was to get uh, this ruggedized circular connector, and uh, Jonathan developed this breakout board that uh, does some power filtering and some other things that plugs directly into the back of the stock camera. So the assembly of this is pretty simple. Once you have all the pieces together, you know, you, you take you take off this back, you plug in our board, and you end up putting it inside of this, uh, this bracket. And the bracket has this, this big clamp on it for holding the heavy lens. Um, this, this front part is by far the heaviest. The, the lens elements are quite heavy for this IR camera compared to the, the little silver box on the back, but uh, you can see the, the assembly process here. Um, so the cost of the custom camera with the enclosure is approximately $10,000. So if, if you wanted to build a handful of them, you know, just multiply 10,000 by the number that you want, and that's that's a pretty good approximate approximation for the cost of uh, building one of these cameras. And uh, we we have our own machine shop here, and uh, we're able to work with the, the machinists to come up with uh, you know something that's nice and easy to to reassemble. So so after we assembled the camera in its new housing. We performed a bunch of environmental tests on the camera. 
You can see here in this picture on the right, we've instrumented it for a thermal vacuum test where uh, we, we put the camera on that plate inside of a vacuum chamber and exercised it from low to high temperatures to check the performance and, and see where the camera would automatically shut off. We were able to get a, a pretty wide range of, of temperatures that we could operate at. Uh, in addition, we did vibe testing on the camera inside of its camera pod that you see here in the bottom left. And then uh, we did radiation testing as well. And uh, we could give the exact levels later, but the camera was tested approximately to the GEVS environment, if anyone if if any of you are familiar with that, um, we think the camera could probably go higher. We've never really destructively tested it. We've never pushed beyond what our project required of us, but um, you know, future work could be done to, to push it to the limit. Anything that you'd like to add, Jonathan? Yeah, I think uh, just one interesting note about like thermal vacuum testing. Um, kind of what we we did for that testing is we wanted to ensure proper cold operation, and then on the hot side we would characterize you know the runtime uh, versus you know heat built up in the camera. Right. Yeah. And a number of customizations were done in order to ensure that there was a good thermal bond where, as the heat was generated on the components, it would work its way down to the base plate where you basically had a bigger thermal sink. Um, somewhere right. for that heat. Yeah, somewhere for that heat to actually get stored up. Right. As part of the that design process, you have to decide how how much you want to couple your you know device to a heat sink so that you know you, you find a balance between operating in cold and hot. Yeah, exactly. All right, so where where is the technology readiness level of this camera? Um, so these cameras were assembled and delivered to be installed on the reentry vehicle quite some time ago. Uh, I think it was 2021, uh, 2019, I believe. But uh, the the schedule, the scheduled launch date for the mission is in November of this year. So we're just you know, about six weeks away from from the scheduled flight. Uh, November 1st was the date that I saw just a couple of weeks ago, and I, I, I don't know if they've changed it or not, but um, as soon as the camera flies, it'll be a, a flight-proven piece of hardware that's that's been to space and back and successfully completed its mission. Um, at this point, it's just been flight qualified through our environmental testing. So uh, this is a very mature camera. And, uh, you know, ho hopefully from this test, we'll get some images back. We've had people ask questions about horizon detection or, you know, maybe using this small camera for navigation somehow. And uh, we've got a lot, of, a lot of those sorts of questions that'll be answered once we kind of get the, the raw data back. In addition to seeing the heat shield, we anticipate there will be some images of space and of Earth and the horizon, and so you know there'll be there'll be a lot more data that we can share after the flight at the end of this year. Yes, yeah, so that add? flight will take us to uh, TRL nine uh, for that particular environment. Uh, you know, for other uses. Uh, for any more extreme missions or different missions, of course, it would have to be uh, requalified based on whatever mission requirements there are. But um, yeah, for this environment, it it'll, will be at a TRL nine after the launch. Yep. All right. Um, so now I think we're going to have. Uh, I think Jordan, were you going to talk about the technology transfer portal? Yeah, yeah, I was. Um, thank you, guys. That was a great presentation. But um, I think before I jump into my slides, I think we'll play that video we were talking about at the beginning, if that's all right. You can find lots of IR cameras, but none of them are this robust and this compact. So the reason we built this was because we couldn't find a ruggedized 
miniature IR camera for space flight. We found that this was a good option to ruggedize because you can build your own custom interfaces with this. Uh, and because it's so small, it gives a lot of room to add ruggedization uh, through the housing development. So some of the uh, design considerations that we kind of considered while we were uh, designing this would be um, the fact that um, it would need a large heat sink, um, it has to work in a vacuum environment, and uh, we also needed to adapt you know, stronger, more rugged connectors as well. So that all went into the thought process of this design. And then uh, it's also un undergone a lot of various uh, environmental testing. So um, it's gone through thermal vacuum testing, vibe testing. Uh, we characterized it uh, you know, in radiation testing to learn its different uh, you know, failure modes and reliability and things like that as well. Um, but the fact that it's already gone through all that testing and it's gone through multiple iterations of you know, power delivery board, things like that, uh, it's kind of a nice off the shelf solution uh, to ruggedized IR needs. This could be used all over the place. If, if you want to, an IR camera on a drone, you know, this is something small enough that it could easily be carried by any, any commercial drone. In industrial applications, maybe you've got a, a, a hot or loud vibration intense assembly line and you want to be able to monitor parts as they're coming off. You know, maybe some kind of uh, mill environment, maybe some kind of forging environment where you've got a lot of heavy impacts from machinery, a lot of heat, I guess messy and noisy environments. Well, I think with that, um, I think that concludes our presentation. If Jerry, you could please scroll back down to the very last slide. I want to leave everybody with that email. Um, Right here at the bottom, there's the agency patent licensing concierge. If you have any other questions about this technology or you want to set up one of these meetings, please feel free to contact. Um, his name is Corey Abercrombie at this link right here. And I believe when this presentation concludes, you will be directed to the TOPS page where you can also apply for the technology too, if, if that so interests you. And with that, I just want to thank everybody for spending your afternoon with me. Um, yeah, thanks.